Nginx is the silent powerhouse behind some of the world's busiest websites. From streaming platforms to e-commerce giants, it quietly handles millions of requests every second. But what makes it so fast, so scalable, and so efficient? It doesn't rely on spinning up thousands of threads like traditional servers. Instead, it takes a completely different approach. Event-driven, non-blocking, and built for concurrency. In this video, we'll break down how Nginx handles massive traffic, even on limited hardware. We'll start from the basics, what Nginx actually is, then explore how it manages thousands of requests with just a handful of processes. We'll also compare it with Node.js, where it helps, and see how this architecture powers real-world applications. Let's get right into it. To understand Nginx speed, we need to look at how traditional web servers handle requests. Servers like Apache use what's called a thread per request model. That means every time a new user connects, the server spins up a new thread just for them. It sounds reasonable until traffic starts to scale. Here you can see three user requests coming in. Three user requests trigger three threads, but we only have two CPU cores. So the third thread just sits there, waiting for its turn. Now imagine this at scale of thousands of users. You get high memory usage, frequent context switching, and if not carefully managed, server slowdowns or even crashes. Now to be fair, Apache doesn't crash easily. It has built-in process limits, queuing mechanism, and modules like worker or event to control this. But even then, handling thousands of concurrent connections can be a strain. And so this model just doesn't scale well, especially when you are serving thousands of concurrent users. And this is where mm. Nginx architecture truly shines. Unlike traditional servers that spin up a new thread for every request, Nginx doesn't do that at all. Instead, it runs a small number of worker processes, usually one per CPU core, and each of these workers can handle thousands of concurrent connections. Here at the top, you have a master process. It doesn't handle traffic directly. Its job is to manage configuration, spawn child processes, and gradually reload updates. Under it, are the worker processes. These are the real workhorses. Each worker listens for connections, handles requests, and uses an event loop to switch between active tasks. You'll also notice cache manager and cache loader processes. These are optional and handle caching behind the scenes, improving performance for static content. Let's zoom in now and see what actually happening inside a single worker process. Incoming request first queue up on a listen socket. Now. A socket is like a pipe between the server and the client. It stays open for the entire communication. So when a client, like your browser, talks to the server, it establishes a TCP connection through a socket. A request is what travels inside the connection. It could be an HTTP GET request to load a web page, an HTTP POST request to submit a form, or a WebSocket message, and so on and so forth. So the listen socket maintains a backlog queue of new incoming connections that have not yet been accepted by the worker process. It's like a small waiting room for new connections that have knocked on the door but haven't been let inside yet. And if too many people show up and the room is full, new arrivals get turned away. In production, however, we tune the operating system and Nginx setting to make this waiting room as large as possible, often tens of thousands so no client gets left outside during traffic spikes. Once a worker accepts a new connection from the listen socket, it doesn't just sit and wait. If that connection is waiting on IO, like reading a file or fetching from a database, Nginx doesn't block. Instead, it quietly places that connection aside and moves on to the next one that's ready. It also monitors another queue called the connection socket, where existing requests wait after completing IO and are ready to resume. But here is the powerful part. Behind these two socket types, there could be thousands of actual client connections. So instead of dedicating one thread per connection, the worker uses an event loop to rapidly switch between all connections, processing whichever is ready next. It's not juggling two sockets, it's managing thousands of connections through these two access points, all without blocking. Now, you might be wondering, this event loop idea sounds familiar, right? And if you have worked with Node.js before, you're right. Both Nginx and Node.js follow event-driven, non-blocking model. But there are some key differences. Both Nginx and Node.js wait on I.O. and continue doing their work without freezing. But how they scale and manage concurrency is very different. In mm -hmm. Node.js, everything starts with a single thread running JavaScript. 
that Thread uses LibUV to offload I.O. tasks like reading files or talking to databases. Behind the scenes, there is a Thread pool, but it's not under your direct control. And only I.O. heavy operations go there. For compute heavy tasks, you need to use worker threads explicitly. In Nginx, it's more structured. You have a master process that spawns multiple worker processes, not threads. And each worker process is independent with its own event loop and is usually bound to one CPU core. So when I say each worker is assigned to a CPU core, I mean Nginx creates as many worker processes as there are CPU cores, unless configured otherwise. And the OS scheduler typically pins on one process per core. So a traditional thread shares memory with others in the same process and can run into race conditions and context switching. An Nginx worker is a separate process, more isolated, more stable. It doesn't spawn new threads for each connection. Instead, it uses efficient system calls like ePoll for Linux or KQ for BSD or macOS to monitor thousands of connections using a single loop. Hold on to that thought. We'll dive deeper into how ePoll makes this possible in just a bit. In fact, in Nginx, it's called worker processes, not worker threads. Each worker is a full separate process with its own memory and own event loop. Say, if you have a 64 core server in production, you typically configure 64 worker processes, one per CPU core. And each worker process is not handling just one request at a time. Thanks to the event loop, a single worker can handle thousands of active connections simultaneously. How? Here mm. is the simplified flow. Incoming connections first arrive at the Nginx listen socket. Think of this like the front desk where all customers show up. A socket here is like a personal phone line between the server and the client. A connection uses that line to send requests. And with ePoll, Nginx doesn't waste time checking every line. It only picks up the ringing ones. The worker's event loop checks the listen socket very quickly using efficient system calls like ePoll for Linux or KQ for Mac or BSD. These system calls allow the event loop to monitor thousands of sockets at once without blocking. It knows which connection needs attention without constantly looping through everything manually. So when a client sends data, for example, requesting a web page, ePoll or KQ notifies the event loop. Hey, connection number 451 is ready to read. The worker process immediately handles just that event, super fast and moves on. If the connection is waiting on IO like desk or database, the worker doesn't sit idle. It continues serving other ready connections in the meantime. In the diagram here, Socket 1 and Socket 2 are ready, meaning they have data or events to process. Socket 3 is not ready yet. Maybe the client is still thinking or still typing or just slow. But all sockets are registered with ePoll upfront. ePoll monitors all of them, ready or not. Only when a socket is ready, that is some event happens, ePoll tells the event loop to handle it. And once the event loop finishes processing all the sockets that were ready, say socket 1 and socket 2, it doesn't just sit idle. It immediately goes back to ePoll and asks, Hey ePoll, any new sockets ready for me to handle? If say socket 3 becomes ready after a little delay, like 100 milliseconds, ePoll will catch it and notify the event loop during the next cycle. The event loop picks it up and processes it. Just like that. This constant back and forth keeps the server completely non-blocking and ultra responsive. Even if every single socket is ringing at once, meaning they all have pending data, Nginx handles it with incredible speed. Why? Because ePoll tells the event loop exactly which sockets are ready. No time wasted checking one by one. The event loop processes each ready socket one at a time, or sometimes a small batch, and moves on instantly. And most operations, like reading an HTTP header, sending a file, or responding from cache, are super lightweight. So even if a million sockets are active and ready at once, Nginx can blitz through thousands of sockets per second, cycling through them at lightning speed, keeping your servers fast, scalable, and alive under massive load. And there you have it, the real secret behind how Nginx crushes massive traffic loads effortlessly, using smart event-driven architecture, efficient system calls like ePoll, and blazing fast event loop. And if you found this breakdown helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to ByteMark. Because here, we don't just skim through the surface, we make deep tech concepts simple and crystal clear. Got a topic you want me to cover next? Drop it in the comments, I'm always reading them. Thanks for watching, until next time, keep learning and keep building.